YouTube has a little bit of a delay when you first start the videos. So I'm going to do it nice and slow and start the reading. I am going to read chapters 7 and 8. Let's see what we can get through here. Hopefully these are smaller chapters. There's a lot about uric acid in this chapter. Uh, in the last chapter, chapter six. Let me get through, where is, is this chapter seven? Oh, it is, yeah, uric acid. Okay, we're gonna learn about uric acid. Let me get the camera. Oh. <coughs> Here we go. I'm gonna knock this out. Chapter seven, uric acid, an energy crisis signal that stimulates fat accumulation. Oh, when you have a lot of uric acid, that's a signal that you that stimulates fat accumulation okay let's see where we get our uric acid uric acid was long considered important only as a cause of gout and kidney stones recent studies are challenging this concept and suggest it may have a role in the stimulation of fat stores and insulin resistance one can mourn the fatal love affair of Romeo and Juliet, but few stories compare with that of the midnight dance of the marine clam worm. Here he goes again talking about the animals. Okay, so for six or seven months, this worm lives in day-to-day -day life, eating algae and other vegetation in the shallow waters of the Southern Pacific when it is time to reproduce, it must perform a memorable but fatal act triggered by a change in a hormone from its brain. It quits eating, following, followed three to four days later by a complete disintegration of the gut. Unable to eat food, its fat stores become depleted and its uric acid levels rise. Its eyes enlarge and it changes from its usual dull gray color to a beautiful lustrous yellow shade for the female and a handsome crimson red for the male. And then both leave their tubes on one enchanted evening, one week after the new moon, to meet at midnight just six inches under the ocean surface here swarms of males and females congregate and when a male finds a female he release, releases a pheromone that excites her causing her to dance by swimming rapidly in tight circles as the males swarm around her at a climactic moment the female discharges her egg alone with uric acid in turn, the uric acid acts as an aphrodisiac pheromone for the male, causing an immediate release of sperm, thereby allowing the eggs to be fertilized. Shortly thereafter, both the adult male and female die. This story is more than a love story, for it shows that uric acid is not simply a marker of the starvation state, but has biological functions involved in survival and reproduction. Indeed, the concentration of uric acid that stimulates the release of sperm is one five hundredth that of the mean concentration of uric acid in human blood. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Let us take a closer look at this molecule of uric acid. Uric acid and the RNA world. Ooh, we heard a lot about RNA when it came to the COVID vaccine. 
While carbohydrates, fats, and proteins are important components of the cells that make up our body, the brain of the cell is made of nucleic acids. DNA is the nucleic acid that carries our genes and RNA is the nucleic acid that directs the production of proteins. While DNA is the driver of most life today, those interested in the origins of life know that the earliest life forms existed solely as RNA, a time known as the RNA world. <coughs> RNA or ribonucleic acid consists of a helical structure containing specific nitrogen rich compounds called purine and primidine bases bound to the sugar ribose and phosphates one of the unique aspects of the structure is that it can replicate itself although imperfectly by making occasional mistakes it had the ability to evolve and over hundreds of millions of years it was able to acquire additional features such as DNA, proteins, fats, carbohydrates that constitute life as we know it today. The RNA world is long past, but some products of RNA related molecules have carried over to life today. One of the most important is ATP, which is structurally related to RNA. ATP is the energy currency that the cell uses to perform its functions. It is so fundamental that it is used by all living organisms as their energy source. While some ATP is produced in the cytoplasm of the cell, today most of the energy is produced in specialized units in the cell called mitochondria. These mitochondria are energy factories that make ADP. In turn, the ADP drives chemical reactions in the cells by donating phosphate groups, which converts the ATP and the ADP and the AMP. The scientist Steve Benner has noted that simpler compounds exist by which an organism can donate phosphate to stimulate these chemical reactions. However, the fact that all life uses ATP indicates that it had such a fundamental function in ancient times that it is still used by life today. In other words, it has been continuously used as the cell's source of energy for generations after generations all the way back to the RNA world. Life in the RNA world would also need tactics to survive when under attack. If an early RNA life form was injured, resulting in loss of some of its structures, what would be a better danger signal to the organism than one of its own degradation products? The major degradation product of the nucleic acid is uric acid. As we shall see, recent studies suggest uric acid functions as a major alarm signal of the organism, telling it that the nucleic acids that drive all cell functions are under attack. Like ATP, uric acid, likely represents a carryover from the RNA world and may have a survival role that is used by all living organisms. That's interesting. So uric acid is produced when nucleic acids and ADP are degraded. Uric acid is formed when RNA, DNA, and ATP are broken down in the body. Uric acid as a waste product that causes gout. 
I'm trying to think, is uric acid the thing that when you exercise, you need to get uric acid out of the muscle cells so you take like a cold bath? I'm trying to remember because when I was doing marathon training back 20 years ago, I'd have to come home and get in a cold tub because my legs were so sore from the, I think it was uric acid in the body. Of course, most physicians do not know about the love affair of the platus nearest, nor do they think about the RNA world. Rather, since uric acid is produced during the breakdown of nucleotides, many physicians have considered uric acid to be a waste product with little biological function. <coughs> it sounds like uric acid is a messenger to tell us what's happening in the body. This belief was bolstered from the observation that some animals like birds and reptiles use uric acid as the, their principal way of to rid themselves of nitrogen containing waste. Because uric acid has four nitrogen atoms per molecule, it is more efficient way to rid nitrogen compared to urea, which has two nitrogens and ammonia, which has one nitrogen. This explains why most freshwater fish excrete nitrogen as ammonia as they have plenty of water and can dilute their urine so that ammonia never reaches levels that are irritating to the tissues. In contrast, mammals, including humans, excrete most of their nitrogen as urea. Reptiles and birds, however, have the conserve, cons, have the, have to conserve water the most. And so they excrete their nitrogen as a chalky uric acid rich precipitate in the form of bird droppings and guano. Since uric acid has been commonly viewed as a waste product, few physicians measure it in patients. And the primary concern is that high blood levels can cause gout and kidney stones. As we mentioned in the last chapters, an elevated serum uric acid is extremely common in people who are obese, especially if they have fatty liver or insulin resistance. A sentiment among many scientists, however, has been that this is the elevation in uric acid is a consequence of obesity and insulin and is not playing a role in causing the obese state. As we shall see, this viewpoint is likely to change. Oh my goodness. Ah, I gotta get ready for this. <coughs> Uric acid. A regulator of fat accumulation. Recall that there is a rise of uric acid in the blood of most animals once their fat stores are depleted. And this coincides with a marked change in behavior in which the animal starts to forage for food. We reason that this foraging behavior might coincide with the activation of a switch to reaccumulate fat and that uric acid could have a biological role in driving this process. To tackle this question, an investigative team led by Miguel Lanzapa, Laura Gabriela, and Sanchez Lozada, and Yuri Salton performed a series of experiments that resulted in some startling findings. So I read this book 20 years ago, and on this paragraph I'm about to read, I put a star and I put important. So let's see what let's see what was important 20 years ago when I read this book. Here we go. While the nucleic acids are the brains of the cell, it is the mitochondria that churn out the energy that runs the cell. Like a factory, Mitochondria produce ATP, which runs the chemical reactions in the cell, generating heat like the stem 
like the steam coming out of the power plant and producing the energy that allows us to run, to eat, and even to think. Without ADB, ATP, the cell would shut down and eventually die. The startling finding was that uric acid was found to affect these energy producing factories, specifically when Miguel Gabby raised uric acid levels inside cells. They could detect oxidative stress in the mitochondria. Oh my God, this is so important. It's like it's making a connection for me right now. Oh my God, this is big. Oxidative stress is a process in which substances that contain oxygen are altered so they are highly chemically reactive with tissues, thereby damaging them and altering their ability to function. Ah! Oh my God, the next word. Smoking, for example, generates oxidative stress that damages the lungs. I smoked for 15 years when I was, I quit when I was 30, 25 years ago. The ultraviolet rays of the sun generate oxidants that damage skin and cause sunburn. In this case, uric acid causes oxidative stress in the mitochondria, injuring specific enzymes involved in energy production and at high concentrations, actually reducing the total number of mitochondria in the cell. What? Have I lost my mitochondria? No way. I can't do that. I need to figure out how to test my uric acid. The way uric acid worked was clever. The oxidative stress induced by the uric acid specifically inhibited an enzyme that led to citric accumulation, which is a substance that stimulates fat production. Okay, I gotta really focus on this. This is big and important. I'm reading this book because I'm hoping that my brain will flip the fat switch and that I'll understand more about the fat switch enough to want to do something about it. So this seems like a big part of it. The way that uric acid worked was clever. The oxidative stress induced by the uric acid specifically inhibited an enzyme that led to citrate accumulation, which is a substance that stimulates fat production. Where's my highlighter? I wish I had a highlighter. Uric acid also inhibited an enzyme required for burning of fatty acids, leading to less ADP being produced. The net effect was to stimulate fat synthesis, reduce the burning of fat, and reduce energy ATP output. In other words, uric acid had altered the mitochondrial energy factories to preferentially convert the energy from food into fat as opposed to producing ADP. Wow, I wonder if that has anything to do with my situation because if I smoked between the ages of like say 18 to 30 and if I killed out my mitochondria is that why my body accumulates fat and it's hard for me to burn fat i'm curious what about the skinny people who smoke what's their story there's a lot of skinny people who are skinny and smoke and they're not accumulating fat so this is hard to believe the net effect was to stimulate fat synthesis, reduce the burning of fat, and reduce energy output. In other words, uric acid has altered the mitochondrial energy factors to preferentially convert the energy from food into fat as opposed to producing ADP. This would be an ideal way to replenish one's fat stores. 
So it says uric acid affects mitochondria causing oxidative stress. This results in stimulating fat synthesis, blocking fatty acid oxidation and reducing ADP production. The net effect is the preferentially shunt the energy from food into fat stores. In a starving animal, a rise in uric acid would help to maximize the recumulation of fat wow interesting i'm going to read that again in a starving animal a rise in uric acid would help to maximize the reaccumulation of fat so basically it's a survival switch that if you if the body's breaking down remember like as you're breaking down you know muscle or whatever it creates uric acid, but then the uric acid causes your body to store fat so that you don't die, so that you can survive. Wow. Energy ATP is still being produced from food in the setting of high uric acid levels, but more of the energy from food is being put back into the fat stores while there is a relative reduction in the production of ADP in the setting of the high uric acid, this is good as it helps to keep the animal hungry. As a reduction of ADP in the liver signals the brain to encourage more food intake. Food intake would increase generating more ATP and at the same time increasing fat stores. <coughs> uric acid as a survival factor in the last decade additional studies have uncovered other biological roles for uric acid that could have beneficial effects during the late stages of starvation for example uric acid may have a role in causing insulin resistance lowering uric acid improves insulin resistance in laboratory animals and Contrary wise, raising uric acids can increase insulin levels in models associated with insulin resistance. Pilot studies in humans also suggest insulin resistance can be improved by lowering serum uric acid levels. Recently, oxidative stress in the mitochondria has been identified as having a critical role in causing insulin resistance. Since uric acid causes mitochondrial oxidative stress, it seems likely that this is the reason uric acid may cause insulin resistance. <coughs> An animal must also maintain its blood pressure to survive periods of famine. Raising uric acid in laboratory animals results in increased blood pressure especially under conditions in which dietary salt is limited. The rise in blood pressure was shown to be due to oxidative stress, leading to a concentration of blood vessels, oh, a constriction of the blood vessels. Similar to insulin resistance, the target of the oxidative stress is likely the mitochondria. Over time, the rise in uric acid causes low-grade injury to the kidney resulting in the retention of salt that further raises the blood pressure. Thus, a rise in uric acid will have great survival benefits by both raising blood pressure and increasing the blood pressure response to salt intake. These effects would protect the animal from a fall in blood pressure that could occur in the setting of dehydration or inadequate salt intake. A weakened animal must also heighten its immune and inflammatory systems to protect against itself against predators and infections. Not surprisingly, uric acid stimulates the release of inflammatory proteins from cells, including well-known marker C-reactive protein. 
Animals with high uric acid levels develop low-grade inflammation. The immune system can also be activated by uric acid. For example, Ken Rock's group at the University of Massachusetts Medical School showed that when cells die, they release uric acid from the breakdown of nuclei acids that drives local inflammation as part of the immediate defense. Uric acid also enhances the action of white blood cells that are important in fighting infection. For example, uric acid stimulates the production of antibodies by B lymphocytes and activate other specialized white cells, T lymphocytes, that help clear infections. In acute malaria, the release of uric acid from dying cells has a role in stimulating the inflammatory response to the malaria organism. The rise in uric acid inside the cell is therefore a call to arms to stimulate local inflammation and the immune response to fight infection. However, the animal also needs to protect itself against the oxidative stress generated from toxins or the infectious organisms themselves. In this regard, uric acid, while being an oxidant inside the cells, acts as an antioxidant outside the cell. The ability for uric acid to neutralize external oxidative stress while at the same time activating the immune system allows for a doubly effective way to combat infection. Finally, an important aspect of survival is the fight and flight response in which the animal heightens its response to danger. In this regard, uric acid may act as a neurostimulant similar to the structurally similar compound caffeine. Wait, what? I'm drinking coffee. Let me read that again. Finally, an important aspect of survival is the fight or flight response in which the animal heightens its response to danger. In this regard, uric acid may act as a neurostimulant similar to the structurally similar compound caffeine. Acutely, raising uric acid in rats results in increased physical activity and raises adrenaline, norepinephrine levels in certain regions of the brain, both which are desired features that occur when an animal is endangered. As we shall see later, the potential benefits of uric acid on the brain function in definitely short-lived. The benefits of uric acid on brain function is definitely short-lived. Nevertheless, for an animal trying to survive, a rapid increase in uric acid has many potential benefits. Okay, this is the end of this chapter. Okay, good. Uric acid, a survival factor under conditions of stress, Raised blood pressure, uric acid, stimulates forging. Raised blood pressure, uric acid, causes insulin resistance, increased stores fat, da, 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 da. Uric acid may have key functions that help survival of a starving animal. Note the similarities of these functions with metabolic syndrome. Specific examples of uric acid as a survival factor. The evidence that uric acid is simply a waste product of metabolism no longer seems tenable. Many studies in other animals show that uric acid drives important biological reactions. Recall the female clam worm that secretes uric acid as a way to signal sperm release from its mate so the egg can be fertilized even as the female worm is dying. Uric acid is also important for crayfish and mollusk, which it binds blood cells and alters how easily they release oxygen. When oxygen content is low, such as a stagnant water, uric acid levels rise and increase oxygen release from the blood of the crayfish, thereby helping increase oxygen delivery to the tissues of the crayfish can survive. In certain bacteria, uric acid can also regulate the expression of genes involved in survival. Uric acid may be involved in the stress response in insects. While humans release adrenaline, insects release a related substance called 
octopamine. Both octopamine and uric acid increase in insects during stress and may be interrelated. A great example is the firefly. Fireflies use octo to spark their light bioluminescence while they use uric acid crystals to reflect the light. The light of the firefly was likely used initially to scare off predators, but over time has evolved as a means of courting and mating. Certainly, the relationship between octopamine and uric acid needs to be better defined. However, it is interesting that the enzyme that generates uric acid may also have a role in helping convert dopamine to octopane, as well as norepinephrine in the brain. Let me read that again. Certainly, the relationship between octopan and uric acid needs to be better defined. However, it is interesting that the enzyme that generates uric acid may also have a role in helping convert dopamine in the brain. Okay, here's the summary to conclude uh, chapter, I think this was seven. Yeah, seven. To conclude, uric acid should be used, should be viewed as a May Day signal by the animal under conditions of starvation or stress. Uric acid functions by acting on the mitochondria energy factors where it causes oxidative stress and disrupts energy metabolism. The result is an increase in fat accumulation, insulin resistance, a rise in blood pressure, the stimulation of inflammation and activation of the immune system. These findings are similar to what animals undergo when they activate the switch to maximize mm -hmm. fat storage. These findings may also remind you of the metabolic syndrome that affects over one fourth of the American population today. So this raises important questions. If uric acid is involved in fat accumulation, is there evidence that uric acid levels cycle in animals in which obesity is tightly regulated? Could uric acid be involved in the metabolic switch that animals use to become fat and lean? Chapter eight, turning the obesity switch on and off. Oh, this is, this is the big, this is the big chapter. This is the big one. And it's only <laughs> four pages. All right, we're going to knock this out fast. Here we go. This is the big question. The fat switch. Chapter eight, turning the obesity switch on and off. Hibernating squirrels show evidence for a fat switch in which they convert from a fat accumulating period during summer to a fat burning period during winter. Can we figure out how this switch works? If a fat switch exists, it would probably be easiest to find in an animal that hibernates. Many hibernating mam mammals have been studied, including prairie dogs, marmots, the Arctic ground squirrel, the oriental hedgehog, Syrian hamsters. However, the one we studied is the 13 line ground squirrel, which is also known as the striped gopher and happens to be the namesake for the University of Minnesota gophers, my medical school alma mater. Excuse me. <clears throat> All of these mammals are true hibernators and show similar patterns. During the summer and fall, they gain significant amounts of weight with up to 50% increase over their spring weight by the time they are readily ready to hibernate. Most of the increase in weight is due to the accumulation of fat. Basal metabolic rate also decreases in late summer which results in a relatively greater gain in weight and fat for the amount they eat. Animals also become insulin resistant and leptin resistant during this time. Sometime in the late fall, the animals initiate hibernation by dropping their metabolic rate further and by quitting eating. And over a period of hours, they drop their body temperature and go into deep sleep. The body temperature approaches freezing temperatures approximately four degrees centigrade and the heart rate and the respirations become almost imperceptible. The animal may appear dead, but it is alive and survives by slowly burning its fat stores. Hibernating mammals do not stay in the torpor
for the entire winter, but rather undergo intermittent arousals in which their body warms up for 10 to 12 hours. The reason for these interbout arousals is not known, but it may be to aid the animal in excreting its metabolic waste as during deep to bore the kidney function cease, ceases. Uric acid hibernation and the fat switch. The sudden switching from a fat accumulating leptin and insulin resistant obese animal to one that is burning fat is driven by a change in metabolism. The triggering event remains a mystery while it was originally thought to be due to falling outside temperatures and decreased food availability, studies have shown there is no, that is not required. We also know that the decrease in metabolism is the initiating event and the fall in body temperature follows. Whatever the process, it does look like a switch has been triggered. The question, of course, was what could be causing this switch we knew as we had discussed in the last chapter that uric acid could be involved for we had found that it can cause both fat accumulation and insulin resistance in experimental studies in laboratory animals there was also suggested evidence that uric acid might be important in hibernation in the literature as some studies have reported that uric acid levels tend to be higher in late summer and then fall as animals enter hibernation only to rise again when they emerge from the hibernation in the spring however it is not the serum uric acid that causes fat accumulation but rather the uric acid levels inside the cells for we had found that the way uric acid causes fat accumulation is by causing oxidative stress to the mitochondria. And the latter are located inside the cells. Since one of the main sites where fat is both made and burned is the liver, our attention focused on this organ. To our delight, there were already studies that reported that both the 13 line ground squirrel and the arctic squirrel had a dramatic decrease in liver uric acid levels during the time they were hibernating a fall in liver uric acid could theoretically explain a switch in the hibernating animal from a period in which one is accumulating fat to one in which one is burning fat in the previous chapter we discussed how uric acid is produced from the breakdown and nucleic acids such as RNA and DNA or related compounds such as ADP. One of the early breakdown products in AMP. AMP, however, is quite a versatile molecule and can be further broken down to uric acid. Okay, wait, I gotta read that again. One of the early breakdown products is AMP. AMP, however, is quite a versatile molecule and can be further broken down in uric acid or can be reutilized by other enzymes. If AMP is metabolized by the enzyme AMP demonase, which will be, will call AMPD, the AMP is degraded, eventually producing uric acid. According to our data, the uric acid would then stimulate fat accumulation by both stimulating fat synthesis and blocking the degradation of fat. However, if AMP is metabolized by the enzyme AMP kinase and AMPK, an opposite effect occurs. Specifically, the activation of AMPK stimulates the utilization of fat by blocking fat synthesis and stimulating fatty acid oxidation. We therefore realized that AMP could sit at the vulcrum where it could be used to stimulate fat accumulation via AMPD or fat burning via AMPK. Okay, here's the fat switch. AMPD, AMPD, AMP, uric acid, fat synthesis, fat burning, insulin resistance. Oh, increase in fat synthesis, decrease in fat burning, and insulin resistance. Mm. <clears throat> AMPK, 
fat synthesis is down, fat burning is up, and insulin. AMP is produced daily during the metabolism of ATP and nucleic acids. If AMP is activated by AMPD, fat accumulation and insulin resistance occurs. If AMP is engaged by AMPK, the opposite results, whether you are burning or accumulating fat may relate to which of these enzymes is in charge. To test the importance of this fat switch, Miguel Lanaspa from our group took cultured human liver cells and genetically modified them so they would either have high, very high or very low levels of AMPD. When AMPD was high, uric acid increased inside the cells and fat accumulated due to a block in fat oxidation. But AMPK was also inhibited through AMPD. But in contrast, when AMPD was reduced in the liver cells, AMPK became dominant and fat levels fell. We then collected, collaborated with Dr. Sandy Martin and her colleague, Elaine Epperson. Sandy is a world expert on hibernating mammals and particularly the 13 line ground squirrel. Sandy provided us with liver samples that had been collected from these squirrels at different times of the year. During the summer, the livers of the squirrels were actively producing fat. Fat synthesis was stimulated. Fat oxidation was low and the liver showed high AMPD activity and the uric acid levels and uric acid levels and low levels of active AMBK. However, when the animals hibernated, the exact opposite was observed. AMPK actively activity was high, AMPD activity and uric acid levels were low and fat oxidation was high. We should state right now that we do not know for certain whether the fat accumulation in squirrels is truly driven by the changes in these two enzymes, although the data is suggestive. We also do not know if this is a universal fat switch. It is interesting, however, that some parallels may be observed in other species, including insects. For example, it is known that serum uric acid levels are high in insects during the larval phase when they are actively increasing their fat content. Once the larva is mature, it will quit eating and look for a place to make a cocoon wandering phase. And during that time, the uric acid production stops and uric acid levels fall in the blood and accumulate in specialized cells in the fat body. Once the pupa is formed, the insect lives off its fat stores and uric acid remains undetectable in the blood. However, just like the squirrel in which uric acid rises at the end of hibernation, so does uric acids also increase in the blood towards the end of the pupa phase, but just before the adult insect emerges from the cocoon. If we have discovered the fat switch that can convert someone from fat accumulating to fat burning, then this raises two key questions. Could humans have activated this switch? And if so, how? That, that humans may have activated the switch is suggestive, for it is well known that people with obesity and diabetes have low AMPK activity. In fact, the number one drug used to treat diabetes is metformin, which works by inhibiting AMPD and stimulating AMPK. But if we have activated the fat, this switch, how could this have happened? All right, that was chapter seven and eight. And I have to make a phone call.
but I think I will come back on another video and read chapters 9 and 10 today. And then the, then the chapter 11 goes into sugar, sugar for the rich, and then sugar for the poor. So apparently sugar is decreasing fructose and uric acid and their role in causing obesity. Okay, we're going to read uh, chapter 10 next. I'm going to come back. Fructose and master driver of the fat switch. What did I just read? I just read, I think, 7 and 8. But if we have a activated this, okay, yeah. I just read chapter seven and eight. So I'm going to come back and read nine and 10 later. Okay. That's it for now, guys. Bye.